So we are discussing the example now, and I continue to uh, discuss examples because for memorizable alone, it's uh, just a rather abstract object. So we consider the standard measure space. Standard means that as a Borel space, usually you write as set of sigma algebra mu, but uh, we usually omit the B, standard measure space. Uh, measure space. Which means that uh, this is uh, isomorphic to the 0, 1 interval, uh, unless you want to have a discrete measure and a big measure. Okay, the measure theory is a separable measure theory is very simple. There's a real line, a unit interval, and a Lubeck measure. That's all. It's isomorphic as a measure space. Okay, and group G, locally compact group. Not necessarily commutative now. And the group G uh, has. Oh, okay, the, we want to have the Borel map such that Ts composed with a, a foreign Tt uh, is Tst, S and Tg as a mapping and the mu of set and uh, Borel set measure zero if and only mu of Ts of n equal to zero. And uh, such a transformation is called non singular uh, transformation. Individual transformation, individual, the Ts alone is called non-singular transformation. So the group G act through non-singular transformations, okay? And uh, requirement is that uh, I, uh, E of X equal to X for all X in A. And also, we uh, assume most of the case, uh, actually, we, all the time in this class, uh, it's all x for all x implies s equal to identity. Of group G. Okay, those are called effective, uh, effectiveness. Uh, well, this is more the, uh, uh, the, uh, because we want to have this, is, uh, we don't want to discuss the empty case. Uh, and then what happened is, okay, this tells you mu follows in the transformation is absolutely continuous relative to the original measure mu. So you have Radon derivative of this measure against the original measure evaluation at x is written as rho sx. Okay, and those are the non-negative function. And uh, this row function satisfies the following cosicular identity. Might try by Tx. Uh, we're ignoring almost everywhere difference. Once again, if you don't want, well, okay. 
you cannot choose, uh, you cannot guarantee the choice of a continuous function even you start with uh, uh, the topological uh, 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 transformation group. Okay. Uh, now, with this, you have the following. F of uh, TS inverse of x, the mu of x over the x equal to rho of Sx f of x the mu of x, okay, for all f in, uh, say, measurable positive function. So particularly L1, uh, L1 of, the, of x mu, then uh, uh, th this gives you uh, uh, the transformation rule. Uh, and this is a uh, there's such system, x, mu, and transformation, uh, the group G and the T. Well, you, uh, we drop T, so simply we write x, G, and the mu. That's a G space, G major space. which is equivalent to saying the group G acts on the L infinity of X mu. <coughs> and the L infinity of X nu is considered as a phonema algebra operating over L X Hilbert space of a square integral function over major space X by multiplication, okay? So, oh, f xi up is f of x, xi of x, f is n infinity of x mu. Uh, we write it a, Abelian on the algebra. Uh, and indeed, this abelian for neighbor algebra is maximal abelian. A equal to A prime. Okay. Here, to prove this fact, you need baby theory of left Hilbert algebra in the already. Here, the, what is your left Hilbert algebra? L to intersection L infinity. Square integrable bounded function. It's a form of algebra. And using that algebra, the, left, the multiplication left and right doesn't make sense because it's commutative. But you will see the commutant is indeed uh, comes in here. And indeed, why this is true is the every element in the commutant they say positive element gives rise to the positive functional over x, and it is a bounded fun, uh, fun, uh, one if it is a major mu is finite major. Well, I shall tell you that the Lubeck major is a finite major, so, and the element A prime gives you the uh, positive linear functional bounded by the normal function, right? And so you, then you have radon derivative. That's the functional given by original one multiplied by the function. That function is, has to be bounded because the functional is bounded by the original major mu. So that's the way you show that A prime, the, scale, the commutant is the algebra itself. Okay, at any case, now, oh, yes, I have to, uh, now, alpha, 
uh, S is an automorphism of A. How? Or how S acting on F, evaluation is F of TS inverse of X. OK. S in G, X in X. OK, maybe I should make a comment here. When you translate X this way, you need, and you're handling a non-commutative group, you need the inverse. Otherwise, the product rule will be reversed. So uh, when you are handling in, in a semi-group instead of a group, then you cannot write this way because inverse need not to exist. In that case, you have to operate TS from the right. Uh, that's the only way. So the uh, uh, translation from the right. So uh, to preserve the uh, the multiplication rule, the alpha s t. You don't want to have at alpha t alpha s. But, but semi group do you get? Well, there there are cases you need to handle the semi group. Oh, well, non-commutative semi-group acting on major space, also non-singular way. In that case, you write this way, x to xts. Or you write it you know, xs for the uh, dropping t symbol. In that case, and then why, why don't you just write it down? R of her, R of her s T F of X equal to F of X S T, which is F of X S of T, so that alpha T F of X S, which is alpha S of alpha T of F of X, so alpha S T equal to alpha s r four and alpha t, right? But if you write on the left, you see that the, uh, the, the uh, products, uh, the product will be reversed. Alpha s t, if you write it in the f of s x, then you are in trouble. So you need inverse if you mean. But we are uh, talking of the groups. The inverse doesn't matter. Uh, OK. So now uh, uh, what is it? Yes. So the, this way you have automorphism action. OK. Now, at the same time, what uh, the how you guarantee the continuity of S to alpha S in this uh, writing? We are assuming that uh, this map is a uh, Borel. Uh, nowhere continuity was been assumed other than the Borelness. In the following, when you, well, possibly, let me see, alpha s of f, okay, f in L p of x mu. Then you, rho of s x, uh, wait a minute, oh yeah, I think it was, uh, Uh, row S inverse, the one over P, F of T, S inverse of X. Then, uh, uh, alpha, simply the, uh, use this rule, uh, alpha S of P norm, uh, P norm equal to F, uh, P norm. 
So, okay, here's one point. The transformation rule on LP and LQ are different. Okay, transformation rule are different. That means that if you X has a coordinate, then coordinate change, the resulting coordinate change on the LP and the LQ are rule are different. Should be other Spanak space should be considered as a, as a, a, a zero point, no, no more a fixed point because they are different quantity. Okay. And take P to be two. What happened? U of S, U of S, Ada, Ruby, Xi, Ada. Thanks to the, this transformation rule for the, uh, the integration. That means S2 U of S gives I eta is Borel. And what happens is if you have L1 of group element, then you define U of F to be F of S, U of S, DS. DS is left invariant hard measure on the group. Then what happens is alpha S of, no, U of S of U of F xi equal to U of lambda SF. Okay. It's lambda s is the left translation on function f. We know lambda s one norm goes to zero as s goes to the identity. In other words, uh, this has been appeared already. S goes to u f r uh, no u s u f xi is uh, uh, continuous in norm in the Hilbert space, only continuous uh, in L2 of x mu. And this f, if you choose for the identity integration one, then this uh, u of f, if you take u f, but so this will be identity that they called approximate identity techniques. So that means the continuous element is uh, uh, dense, and the U of S is bounded. So if you then so anything uniform limit of a continuous function is continuous. It's that's uh, theorem number one in the undergraduate math student. So. That's why U of S is continuous. And it, uh, you uh, very quickly uh, realize add of U of S restricted to A is the, your action proving the S to alpha S uh, is point-wise strongly continuous. Or if you apply to the predial, namely L1, that's a continuous in norm, when pointwise continuous in norm. Okay. So <laughs> this borelloness miraculously guarantees the continuity of the translation when it comes on the LG. Yes? Is this some problem that drove me a measurable function in two variables? Yes, that, that is also part of the game, too. Yeah. Well, those are the, the actually sticky part of the, or the hard major theory. It's, uh, it's called, well, it's, it has a good name. It's called hard analysis. It is very hard, always. Hard analysis is hard. That's why they call proudly the hard analysis. And we appreciate their work. Their, their work. 
let's say where they oh here. Yeah. And as opposed to the hard analysis, we are called the soft analysis. Yes, we are doing soft analysis, uh, and so it is soft. Uh. But uh, soft analysis Without back by hard analysis, it will be a bit, become a, a too much of a soft. <laughs> so now we have the uh, arc translated uh, the G major space into the action of a group on uh, the uh, commutative phenomenology graph, which is the L infinity of something. So now, yes. Now maybe because we start from the erasing always from the, that end, I should locate the eraser on the left. Okay, so we have A and G and aroha. And you call R of A. Well, indeed, usually X mu group G and aroha is the fixed point, uh, the cross product. Okay, this is the, so the acting on L2 of X cross G, oh, I write it uh, X mu tensoring with L2 of G. Well, you can view this all the way to two variable functions there. Yeah. And, uh, okay, now, uh, the, uh, for, we call the action the space, uh, the, this G major space is free if in the context of a continuous group we have to have a sporing for any compact subset uh, of G, which misses the K, the, and uh, any E in uh, positive measure, uh, then they exist for the smaller subset such that, such that uh, Ks inverse of F intersection with F is empty for all S in K. Then that's called uh, the free Action is free. That means what if uh, S is not, I the K is not identity, then uh, any set E of positive measure, then you small, then T, the union of T S of F, S runs in K, does not return to F. Or move outside of F. Okay. Uh, what? Is equal to zero. Is equal to F. <laughs> equal to, not, not equal. Uh, oh, yes, yes, it's uh, equal to empty. <laughs> yes, it does not intersect. It's, uh, it's empty. Thank you. So, 
in the, uh, if you want to uh, phrase this in terms of the algebra, the following is the equivalent for any non-zero projection, E projection of A, then there exists F, which is not zero, such that aloha S of F is perpendicular to S in K. That's the same statement. Okay, that's the freeness. Then, uh, how good it is. This uh, guarantees the following theorem. Okay, as before, x mu and g. Then, action is free. Second, a commutant in the cross product in R is A. Of course, A is considered as a subalgebra, so, namely pi alpha of A. And those two conditions are equivalent. It's equivalent. And the proof is quite involved if group G is not discrete. If group is discrete, then you, then you have element to be, well, every element is more or less summation of X of S, of U of S, S in G. And if X commute with X A, equal to alpha s of x a. There is such a x ex exists for s non-identity. And then the, oh, if it is not free, or it's free. This type of uh, expression uh, requirement for the commuting, then you will see that the freeness guarantees this, and also this guarantees the freeness also for the discrete group. Continuous group proof is quite involved. The whole duality theory of non-commutative group needed, and also for the commutative group, then still you require the Arbson con uh, spectral theory. Okay, so uh, non-discrete group case, this uh, this equivalence is a quite uh, pretty uh, deep theorem. And uh, on the non-commutative case, non-commutative, if A is no longer the commutative, just the phonemology of M, and G alpha, then relative commutant is in the in the cross product is behaves very very mysterious, and in the case of a trace scaling, it, it, that suddenly uh, you have a control, but. Uh, it, or modular automorphism, but other than that, all everything is in there. Even for the actually real line, real line acting on your uh, say factor, you make cross product, and uh, hard part when that cross product is a factor, and a given algebra is a factor. And the direct, so that uh, the corner spectrum is uh, 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 a whole uh, real rhyme. And uh, in that case, the relative commutant theorem is very tricky. Yeah. So, and uh, so, yeah. So, uh, what is the analog of uh, freeness <coughs> in the non commutative case? The yeah, no, no. Well, remember this, this statement. In the non-commutative case, you cannot uh, say like this. 
uh, this is not uh, easy to phrase for the non-commutative case. Uh, the, uh, the, the commutative case, yes, but the non The point is indeed, when you go into the non-commutative setting, that what happening is following the for the say even for the real line. Uh, okay, what that mean? This orthogonality. Orthogonality means the okay in the in our idea everybody moves uh, the continuously, right? But this is showing, this is requiring uh, well, the algebra A, for instance, if a very visible way, say, alpha S of, of the real line, say, X, uh, TS of X equal to X plus S. What that means is, this uh, setting then, next moment it's become already orthogonal. Next moment it's orthogonal. In other words, speed of rotation is infinite. Right? It's the speed of the uh, rotation is infinitely fast. And uh, it, it, uh, now, people think this is very natural. But uh, if you change the point of view, it is very unnatural that the infinitely fast uh, go to the 90 degree uh, rotation. So in the non commutative world, you are concerned this is a real world, and uh, things move continuously, then that means that this never occurs. Right. Then what, what's happening then they, if this is unnatural, how can we visualize a natural one? It's invisible. Natural world one become invisible. And we lose the feeling, right? So that's the problem which uh, my former Yasaka, you know, she faced when she worked on the one parameter automorphism group. But in any case, we, let's move on. Uh, let's say, where are we? Oh yes, the, so we well, let's see what happened. So now, if it is free. Uh, is a free, then uh, let me see, there we are assuming free. So the A is, uh, okay, the resulting algebra Rx G mu is a factor if and only if the a alpha equal to scalar, okay, a become okay, a being a maximal variant, the center has to be part of a, and the u of s is sitting inside algebra, alpha, which commute with uh, your element if your element a is in the center mean that central element has to be fixed by the action U, right? The yeah, U.S. Uh, if A is the center of R, then U, first of all, A has to be A commutant, and in R, which is A. So A is a given by function, and the A U of S has to be U.S. of A, which means that uh, you hit by US star, the alpha S of A equal to A, 
which is a scalar if and only if a var uh, equal to fix the scalar. So ergodicity is equivalent to the your algebra, the R is a factor. Provided action is a free. So, now we assume both. So, your action is free. Uh, so, so, now we have theorem. So those are all the, the uh, x, g, mu is a free and ergodic. Well, maybe I should just make us a, 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 a very little com uh, uh, small comment. The non uh, a r say b then that's an uh, error infinity of y nu. Then that means x mu to y nu. Uh, there's a uh, surjective mapping because error infinity is sitting in error infinity of x mu. And, and then the transformation is, the, this is a fixed point, so, uh, you have y underneath the point y. So x of y is, say, this is a pi inverse of y. And the g acts on vertically, or each fiber acting on that. And then, uh, so uh, you have x, y. So you have uh, g, y, and the mu decompose, and the action t is uh, once again. So those are the ergo decomposition of the given action. So every uh, action is decomposed into the ergodic system or continuous sum of uh, the ergodic sum. So you are, we want to concentrate on this one fiber as the not uh, worrying about uh, how you um, assemble them. Okay, so that uh, depends on another story. So we assume pre and ergodic. Okay, now, then we have the following. One, R is of type one factor. So uh, now uh, the free, this Im implies R, the your algebra R is a factor. Okay, you, uh, you are in the factor case. It's type one, if and only if the, there exists a one orbit which carries the major mu. Major mu is zero outside of a single orbit. In other words, your major mu is concentrated on the single orbit. Then that's type one. Okay, that is what this one. This is precisely G axon, axon G itself. Just example. That, uh, and the freeness uh, guarantees that action is isomorphic to the translation action on G. So trans, those are called the transitive action is transitive and free transitive action is group acting on G itself by translation. Okay, that's a, so if G is type, if finite group, then type one, I'll say N, then that's type one N. The yeah, isomorphic to n by n matrix algebra. Okay, that's not a problem. And if G is infinite, then type one infinity. Transitive case. And type two one R is of type two one. 
if and only if number one, j is discrete. To number b is uh, 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 there exist a discrete and the uh, first uh, non-transitive. So the action G type one and uh, non-transitive. Uh, such as is called properly ergodic. Okay, transit, if the uh, ergodic transformation is not transitive, then you call it uh, properly ergodic. So uh, it's a properly ergodic, G is discrete, and they exist finite invariant measure say new equivalent to the original major mu. Absolutely continuous each other. Okay, that's the, then you have type two one. So that's the number two one. To infinity, either A is G is non-discrete, Okay, non uh, once again, non-transitivity is uh, already assumed because non-transitivity goes back to type one. Non-transitive, no, non-discrete group, non-discrete. Then, uh, and exist, the exist B, uh, B is exist uh, the major nu such that uh, equivalent to major mu so that uh, D T mu T S D mu equal to delta G of S and and uh, a row of an S uh, X equal to one. Yeah. Uh, the, uh, uh, this one, uh, this is new. Uh, relative to row function, relative to new. Maybe I should write more than uh, uh, D new circle T S uh, D new of X equal to one. It says it's not inverse. This is yeah, and uh, that is the case uh, if uh, either or, or a g is discrete and b they exist infinite, not uh, finite, invariant major equivalent to uh, give major mu, absolutely continuous each other. Okay, that's a type two infinity. And the, uh, the third is type three, the rest, remaining case. Means uh, that gives you type three. The, this is the equivalent, none of those. Okay, now uh, let me see. Uh, okay, here. Type 3 was, well, this was known from Murray and Poneman time. 
and the type three is always uh, defined as a remaining case, exceptional case. And in the mathematics, such a class is considered as a exception. You don't want to touch it. <laughs> that was more or less the general attitude. In fact, it was an uh, operator algebra that attitude of his remaining case. Forget it. It has, has been the case. But uh, uh, thanks to the ad ad advancement of modular theory, it's become, it's has a very fine analysis now possible. And uh, we are doing that now. Okay, now we move on to the further more concrete example. Okay, so let's go, go look at the further concrete example. So concrete case, now well, we cannot uh, just stay in the finite group. So the simple uh, infinite group is the additive integer group. Additive group G is not additive real, no, additive integer group. And the major space is X is circle. Uh, lambda scalar so yes can you give an example of the first game of two infinity yeah I, I'm going to do all all of them the, 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 now that is the now the remaining hour will be on that okay so and the major mu uh, is about uh, the in integral over 1 over 2 pi of f of lambda. And well, well, I would like to e to the 2, two pi i uh, s ds from 0 to 1 is your major. Fair enough, right? That's uh, about the length the, the and the uh, transformation of x. Okay, now we fix theta which is not rational. Okay, and the T of e to the 2 pi i s equal to e to the 2 pi i theta e to the 2 pi i s. So what you are doing is And uh, this is uh, angle s divided by 2 pi, right? So now here uh, 2 pi theta. So s is acted by transformation. That's a t, uh, well, x, t sub x. Uh, Oh, why don't I, I well, <laughs> like that, x, uh, maybe too small, x over 2 pi, that's x. Do you rotate by theta all the time? Uh, then what happened is, uh, the, the Fourier uh, analysis tells you so uh, R have f of x equal to 
e to the e minus 2 pi i theta times x. That's what uh, we, then we know that the Fourier analysis tells you uh, right away to this uh, uh, L2 function. You can uh, decompose into the Fourier uh, uh, series and uh, then you see what it does to the Fourier expansion and then the fixed point is you can very quickly uh, prove AR equal to the scalar, nothing that constant, so ergodic. And the translation, you, you have no fixed point. Because theta was chosen to be irrational. So no fixed point means free. The action is free. So the cross product R is 2 1 factor. Okay, so two and a half factor pops up very naturally. Now, next one. <clears throat> so that's uh, example one. Example two, X is now real line. Then group is now rational number, translation as subgroup. Okay, translation, uh, there, there's no fixed point under the rational uh, transformation uh, by alpha is a scalar constant function. Uh, the translate, if irrational rotation leave, no, no, not irrational, just a translation by all rational numbers is uh, fixing any function, but then that function has to be constant. That's uh, so. And major, Rubek major, mu is an invariant. Translation invariant, uh, even the other number is uh, invariant. So, this gives you what? Which category it belongs to? It's a discrete, it's not a finite major possible, but discrete infinite, well, major mu itself is invariant. That's a two infinity. So, this is a two infinity. So, Resulting algebra R is of type to infinity. This is type infinity. Uh, the, yeah? Yeah, so with, with, uh, with, uh, G's non discrete. Uh, one the other one. Yeah, that one, that uh, the uh, second A, G is a discrete, in the case G is discrete, there's no modular function involved, so the existence of invariant measure equivalent to the given measure. But this case, given measure is already invariant, so. Okay, so you're working with the, with the, with the Fixed point is a translation invariant function yeah, is. is So ergodicity guarantees. So th this is a factor of type two infinity. Okay. Now, remaining case is the following. Yes. Last in the opening. If G to be finite group. If G is finite group. Uh, the, then. Uh, uh, if G is, say, finite group G sub N. So how do you get type I N? G over N Z. And the octon itself. There you end up with N by N matrices algebra. That's type 1 N. So now, uh, this is a type 2 case. 
Now, what, so keep this in mind. Now, okay, the, what happening is, what you observe is, uh, Lubeck major is a unique uh, the invariant major and uh, mu, which is equivalent to mu. No, uh, no other major uh, invariant. Only scalar multiple of a major mu, Lubeck major is strong, rational in uh, uh, the uh, translation invariant. Okay, that is uh, you. We keep in mind. Okay, then. Oh, okay. If we throw in single transformation, which is not. Uh, uh, preserved uh, major, major, then there's no invariant major anymore, right? So what you do is the following. Uh, maybe we can erase this one now. You maybe fix uh, the. Uh, you take. Uh, rational number semi-direct product of Q uh, positive star multiplication. So the group is uh, G equal to GAB, which is AB01. Acting on the X1, uh, X0. X plus zero, X one. Okay, this is the space. With, uh, so, A X plus B. Multiplication by scalar and the translation two together. That acts on real line. Okay, this is again the free action and uh, ergodic because B acts ergodically already, B portion. The A, multiplication by non-identity is a, a preserve, uh, there is a scale major to Rebecca by, by A itself, no, no invariant. So, if you are group G, Axon here is of course on the real line. Then this uh, R is of type three. This will be a type three. Now, if we okay, uh, another we have still thirty minutes to go, so we, uh, we can go rather leisurely. So if we move to the restrict, uh, what happens is indeed, uh, well, we, this requires a little bit of an, uh, analysis. If we are uh, all over A here, then uh, you end up with a 3, 1. But uh, this, uh, this was a bit of analysis required. But uh, now you take G to be lambda and B01 and the B portion is a low run polynomial minus N to N, A minus N to the lambda N. Oh, K and K. And uh, AK is integer. Say, uh, this I take this. B is in low run polynomial of lambda. And then see what happened. Acton, this is a group G, acting over real line. OK. The B part, look at this expression. Oh, lambda being fixed, 0, lambda 1. Okay, so uh, B is, is uh, can be small. Uh, the interval, the arbitrarily small. That uh, if you uh, take the lambda 
and one of n, a translation by lambda n. So that means that this actually this z lambda of dense in the real line. That can be seen right there. And which guarantees that the action of g lambda, uh, z lambda translation action the, uh, is already ergodic because of the density, it's ergodic. So the Lubeck major is only invariant major. And what lambda does, multiply by mu by lambda. And so what happens is that uh, this is type, suddenly type 3, but because lambda is controlled, this is 3 lambda. That's the way we cooked up that 3 lambda. OK. Now, now I come to the following. The, now, the, you might think that the, all the example I have shown is somewhat exotic. The, the, the rotation, the irrational angle, etc. Okay, but uh, what I'm going to show you to, uh, is the I, I, I often gave the colloquium talk claiming uh, where is, uh, the, uh, the title is, where is von Neumann algebra? Where is a factor? Is it uh, exotic, nice thing, shiny in the temple, or in the, uh, appearing in our daily life? Now, uh, the, the example I have shown is somewhat uh, uh, the artificially crea created the talk. But now, I want to take L2 over real line. This is maybe the Hilbert space everybody has to work on. Right? L2 or the Hilbert space of a square integral functions over real line against the Rubeck measure. Okay. And now you I want to define just x plus one. Translation by one. So this is called the shift unitary translation by one unit. Okay, so u n xi of x equal to xi x plus n. Okay, now fix theta irrational. And I define b xi of x to be exponential 2 pi i theta x psi of x. It's a multiplication by 2 pi i theta x by the trigonometric function. So we you and the M. Oh, okay, this is not a bad things to do. What happened? Equal to two pi i theta x plus one psi of x equal to two uh, exponential two pi i theta uh, e to the two pi i theta x psi x. This is the two pi i theta oh, x plus one remains x plus one. So this is V uh, uh, time. 
Oh, this is uh, no V. You uh, no. Yes, V U xi O v x. So U U V equal to no two pi two pi i theta V U. Okay, this is very easy to show. And now. Okay, so U and V are nothing strange uh, operator. One is a translating by one unit. The other is multiplying by exponential function to pi i theta dot. Now, ask the following question. Find psi zero in H in the L2 over R such that U of N, V of M uh, apply to xi 0 and N and M run all the integers and take linear combination and uh, take a closure. which become entire your real line. This is a very concretely addressed question. And I'm sure that there are the real analysts uh, or hard analysts love to work on such a question. Okay. This, uh, for phenomenal algebra, is what that means. Oh, that means that you are considering U and V find a cyclic vector psi zero. That's the question for operator algebra. And then, uh, then the operator as right start to uh, uh, wondering. Of course, we are interested in the white type of phonema algebra we are having here, right? Is it a type one, type two, two one, two infinity, or type three? And answer is this is. The actually isomorphic one we discuss over the torus. Remember at the, uh, after the translation transitivity example, the first example of the torus with irrational rotational irrational rotation. That's the example number one. That this is isomorphic to the example. Uh, number two of today's presentation. Uh, what was the conclusion of the third one? Two sub one, type two one. It is type two one. If it is type two one, dimension theory for type 2, 1 is in place. You talked about the dimension, relative dimension of Hilbert space. And the cyclic vector, existence of cyclic vector is equivalent to the relative dimension is less than or equal to 1, right? Less than or equal to 1. Remember that the, what is the relative dimension? Is uh, you are comparing your Hilbert space H against L2R. Well, in this case, in uh, L2R tau. And if Hilbert this one is larger than the, this uh, uh, standard representation, 
no chance to have a cyclic vector because every cyclic, uh, if you admit R psi to be H, then this is contained inside R. Everyone, with, because what is it? Then you have on a psi, uh, given, but this uh, you can choose xi one here such that uh, omega xi in Hilbert space equal to omega xi one, and then if you that case uh, you have m xi that Hilbert space h unitary conjugate to the m xi one, which is in or oh, m prime xi. Oh, it is yeah. It is a unitary point. That is the hard part of the uh, comparison of cyclic projections. That says L2 of R tau. So dimension has to be less than one. How? What is this? Uh, uh, then you quickly compute uh, relative dimension relative to R of L to R. Then, look, this is exactly that number theta we fixed at the beginning. You recover that theta. And then, this uh, existence of a cyclic vector here is exactly same as theta being less than one. So existence of a cyclic vector is equivalent to this inequality. Of course, if in that case, we, take zero, we don't take zero. So this is the answer to the hard analyst. Yeah, hard, yes. And, but this is a fourth. Our, we are uh, doing the soft analysis. And uh, all right. So now uh, uh, please question yourself. Is this example ex exotic? The way to look at it could be exotic. But uh, the object itself, you, and the be by no means the uh, exotic example that the when you start discussing unitary operator of Hilbert space, maybe the very first example to give to the student is translation by one. This is the very first example for unitary. Well, at the same time, well, I'll give you uh, another example, don't view this is only example. All unitary doesn't look like this. You can have a unitary operator like this. So this example shows the, the in the reality, there are many, many, many examples set is flying around to be discovered. And uh, so uh, the, our subject is uh, not exotic as people might think. This is the message of, uh, of the, uh, this example. Okay, those example is not type three, but uh, nevertheless, okay, that the infinite tensor product is already t telling you that type three can be very easily cooked up, coming up, and that's the way the. Uh, Fujihiro showed that uh, most of, uh, almost all uh, factor occurring in quantum field theory is type three. But, uh, namely, what he showed it that uh, identifying physical object with this, that type of factors. Uh, well, this is type three. So the, in reality, the type three is unavoidable. All right, now where are we? So,
Now uh, we have 15 minutes remaining, so I might start the, five, the construction of a core without resorting to the crossed product construction. But uh, there's some flavor of it. There's no way. OK. There, there was a second way of yeah. getting it to infinity yeah. for a non-discrete group. No. Non-discrete. Non-discrete non group. Order. Well, that's it. Oh, non-discrete group. Uh, okay. Oh, okay. That, that's a good example. Uh, good question. So let's take a look. Take two torus from the mu. Ah, no, it's poor. ZW. Uh, R, oh no, TS. Okay, once again, theta is irrational of ZW equal to e to the uh, 2 pi i s z e to the 2 pi i theta s w. So what happening is you have Hmm. Two torus. Uh, well, usually, if you write this one, is that a circle, unit circle. But uh, the, what this does is. Uh, Called the Kronecker flow. The irrational uh, angle rota uh, spiraling all of uh, the torus. And due to the irrationality of this state, this never come back to the same point. If you leave from ZW, here, then to go around, 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 around. You come back almost, but not exactly. You go, go away, once again, go away. So repeat it. And the, uh, this uh, Rubeck major, the, the, well, Rubeck major, I don't know how to eat, uh, eat a function of E uh, uh, 2 pi i s e 2 pi i. T integral of uh, ds dt, double integral 0 to 1, uh, 0 to 1 square is in your integration. The translation is invariant. And uh, all, every orbit is dense in the two torus. And the consequently, action is ergodic. At, uh, and the no fixed point, and the action is free. So, so therefore, in this case, uh, L infinity of two torus with this major, uh, uh, with this one, tensoring with uh, this action R of real line, is then two infinity factor. Because the real line is non-discrete. Because it's, uh, it's non-discrete. So there's uh, no finite trace. If you have a finite trace, a uh, finite trace, t tau zero on this algebra, what happens is uh, the error, in, uh, say, 8, uh, error infinity of two torus. 
A. There exists the conditional expectation relative to this uh, trace. This tra uh, that relative to trace, then what happens is U S of this trace has to be zero. You, you, uh, that you can say, uh, 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 see. And otherwise, uh, because that the uh, U.S. of a, uh, A equals uh, uh, R S A of U.S. And if you apply this, that uh, E of U of S A, uh, one hand, and uh, at the same time, this is aloha S of A, epsilon U S uh, in algebra A. You cannot find such A other than zero. For this is true for all A, so this has to be zero. At the same time, U S converges to identity when S goes to zero. Right? So, uh, constantly zero converges, uh, the uh, E, conditional ex expectation is continuous. So this has to converge to one. And the zero con cannot converge to one. So there's no trace, no finite trace possible. So that's the way to prove that uh, your algebra has to be uh, no, it doesn't have a finite trace. At the same time, it, you, because original major is invariant, so you do have infinite trace. So, so it, uh, uh, this is a to infinity example. In the case the, the, of the uh, non-discrete group. Okay. Uh, Mm. Uh, maybe I think uh, to, uh, to start uh, the co construction of a core, maybe the time remaining eight minutes are a bit too short. I will spend for the question and answer for this five, eight minutes. Any, any question? Can you talk about the invariant measure? What? What is the invariant measure? Invariant measure is your uh, original Rubeck measure, finite measure. But uh, if you extend to the whole line, whole real, uh, real, uh, the uh, phonema algebra, it's no longer finite because the, this uh, tau hat, remember tau hat? Uh, tau hat is a trace over the, because it's invariant under U of S. And tau hat is not, a, a, this is a semi-finite, well, what is it? This tau is tau uh, of uh, the I, say, should I write it, uh, yeah, alpha hat. What is alpha hat? Aroha hat, well, because this is the uh, action was a real line, it's uh, R acting on the crossed product, right? And uh, this is uh, R hat of S, uh, the IR hat, IR hat is of X well, for the positive element, it's uh, integration over the real line, R hat of S. Ds, when it, is, it converges, if x is uh, positive, and if this is bounded, then this element has to be on the fixed point of R, of R hat, which is in A. And uh, you can apply this trace. The, the trace is, takes finite, uh, the, everybody takes finite value on this trace on A. So trace of A. So trace of A following I aroha hat. Integration against the dual action is your tau. 
And this is not bounded. This is infinite, uh, the unbounded one. So the, uh, the resulted trace is indeed unbounded trace, not a bounded. Although it, uh, it looks like a finite, takes finite value on A, it's not. Because finite, uh, the, any, no element in A, if you apply to A in original algebra, aloha is hot at the fixing. Right, original algebra is, um, does not move. If you integrate constant function against Lubeck measure over the real line, it's always infinite. So the trace, your trace does not take finite uh, value on A, the purely infinite value on A. So A intersection of how is zero uh, in this example? Yeah. What if uh, the measure space has atoms? What? What if the measure space has atoms? If measure space atom, yeah. then what happens is uh, the group cannot be continuous because the group, a continuous group cannot act on a uh, sp uh, discrete space. So group has to be discrete. And the discrete group acting on discrete space freely means your, uh, and at the same time allegorically, then your set has to be original group. And the group is uh, discrete, and your space is discrete. So, in other words, discrete space cannot accommodate properly uh, ergodic action because it's, you can you can count so if ergodic action is a single orbit yeah. Yeah. all these actions were uniquely ergodic this uh, one this irrational the yeah. why irrational yeah, yeah. The, you said they were all uniquely ergodic so there is just one invariant measure yeah, well, we, because this is the dense, the uh, L, the L orbit, L, uh, all L orbit is dense in uh, two torus. So, indeed, this is a good example to, so if you, uh, instead, if you look at the simply, this is the subgroup of the two torus. Right? This is the subgroup of two, one parameter subgroup of two torus, which is not closed. If you close it, you, oh, excuse me, this is a T2. Two torus, uh, this is dense in uh, two torus. And uh, actually, this flow has a name, it's called chronological flow. And uh, Indeed, uh, this type of action of the Orion on the two torus is, uh, appears uh, over and over again in, in many uh, mathematics, in fact. Uh, indeed, also, the, I, uh, let me see, Mautner, once he used uh, this example to construct uh, Nilpot, uh, no, solvable D group, connected solvable group, uh, 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 who, who, whose regular representation is not type 1. It, uh, <laughs> the dimension it was 5, 5 dimension. Uh, the, he uses uh, uh, this example to construct that type. Of course, that uh, it's kind of a bit uh, artificially cooked up for the uh, solvable group, but uh, nevertheless, uh, uh, and uh, uh, let's see what is. Uh, oh yes, uh, and also irrational rotation 
on the one torus, you can see that the uh, uh, one torus is boundary of uh, the open unit circle. And uh, if you look at the bounded analytic function on the uh, one torus, then there, irrational rotation also acts on that function space, h infinity of two torus. So that analytic function inside and uh, boundary value is bounded. Uh, the, you can see also uh, the, the relation with that complex analysis. And uh, there, uh, the, your algebra is uh, sitting there. If you pick up or not pick up, that's uh, up to the individual. Uh, uh, any uh, other question? Uh, oh, no, okay. Let's see, how many mini moments? Oh, my boy. Uh, possibly, uh, well, I hope I will have a uh, another time to c uh, cook up the core, how the core look like uh, when you, uh, your phenomenal algebra given by group. This is called group major space construction. And uh, how the uh, core look, is that a group major constructed phenomenal algebra or not? Uh, and that is called, uh, 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 well, construction of flow of weights of the, yeah, okay.